Hey everyone, welcome to the Acrobatic Arts Podcast. I'm Loren, and I will be interviewing some of the top leaders and innovators from the dance and acrobatic industry. If you are a teacher, performer, student, or a lifelong learner like myself, you are sure to find these episodes intriguing and full of inspiration. Acrobatic Arts is passionate about providing current and relevant information for everyone. So please, sit back and enjoy as we share our passion with you and the world. Sarah Calvert is with us today to talk about the cartwheel rebound and the round off, two very important skills for acro dancers. Let's learn about the cartwheel rebound first. Hi, I'm Sarah with Acrobatic Arts and I want to take a moment to talk about the cartwheel rebound. So why have we included this cartwheel rebound in our syllabus? There's a few reasons. It's not necessarily a true progression for the round off. It serves a greater purpose so that we can connect our step out skills, so our um, cartwheel drive down, back handspring step out, back handspring step out, all of our tumbling skills that are done in that stepped out position, it's going to be the lead up for that. So that's why we've included it in the syllabus. You might find that as your dancers are getting up into their higher levels, they're training their round offs, they're training their back handsprings, they're, they're connecting those skills, now you want them to start stepping out their skills and doing those back handsprings in a split. But you might actually find that you can say, okay, this cartwheel into it now and do that back handspring and they can't. And I really noticed this with my own students and I was surprised because I thought surely they should be able to cartwheel and connect that back handspring, but they couldn't. So what I realized is that I needed to go back in time and really make sure that I was building up those progressions and those foundations so they had that element of the skill by, by the time I wanted them to step out that back handspring. So they're doing their cartwheel, as they're doing that cartwheel rebound, they're driving that foot down and beside and making sure that that foot gets into a nice tight alignment before they go um, sit back into their back handspring. A lot of the times you'll see they flag their foot out to the side so they finish that cartwheel and the other foot doesn't really fully get nice and tight in. It's flagging out to the side and then when they go to do their back handspring, they end up kind of throwing it or twisting it. They're looking over their shoulder. They have a really weird takeoff because the, because the foot's not in there. They're kind of taking off of two staggered feet and it's just a hot mess. So really you need to be working on that at an earlier um, time in your training so that when it's time to work on those step outs that drive down is tight it's clean they understand it so it's not really a progression for the round off but you could use it as a progression for the round off but it's really about thinking forward into the future and understanding that the purpose of that cartwheel rebound is that it's going to go into those step out skills for your choreography that you'll be doing in your dance routines thank you sarah for your wonderful breakdown of the cartwheel rebound and now let's hear what Sarah thinks about the round off. In my opinion, I think the round off is really one of the hardest skills that you will teach your dancers. And it's one of the hardest things to have them master, even though the dancers themselves may feel like it's actually an easy skill. And that's just because they really are doing a cartwheel that lands with two feet. So they feel like they've really mastered this round off and they're doing this round off because they've done this cartwheel that lands with two feet. However, there's just so many technical components to a good round off and it really is super foundational for your tumbling skills. You would never teach someone to do fouette turns until they could do a very good, solid, clean, single pirouette and probably multiple pirouettes. So if you want them to have strong tumbling, um, backwards tumbling in particular, you really want them to have a really well refined round off. That's going to take a lot of time, it's going to take drills, and it's going to take teacher attention to really master this round off. So why is the round off important in your tumbling? Well first of all, like I said, it's setting up your future tumble pass. So if your round off is short and you're landing with your chest forward, or if your round off is um, doing something like twisting or there's some rotation happening, what that means is that you're setting yourself up for a poor tumble pass and you're probably going to see problems in your back handsprings that actually originated in the round off. So what are some technical things you should be remembering? We want the round off to be low, long and fast. So it's quite common that dancers will come in really high in their round off and they'll kind of scoot it um, and it'll be short. Their chest will land down and they're not able to get enough punch out of the round off. We're looking to see that the legs connect together at the top and they snap together fast 
and really it's important that we're thinking about their hands. So it's very common that dancers won't be able to get their second hand teed off. Why do we want to talk about the tee? Well, we know that if we are thinking about our biomechanics and our hands are like this, our joints um, are lined up, but then we're going to be pushing off diagonally if we keep our hands in a normal position. When we do that round off, if we bring the second hand around so that it's facing, now all of our joints are going to be lined up. We're going to be more biomechanically efficient if our shoulder, our elbow, and our hands are in line. We're more powerful than if we're trying to push off of something sideways. We're just stronger here. That makes us more biomechanically efficient. So we want to tee off that second hand. Sometimes you'll see some athletes who will actually rotate both hands, which is also fine, but we just want to make sure that they don't have their hands in the normal cartwheel because that means they'll be pushing off sideways and they'll be less efficient. One of the big things that dancers miss is the um, rebound or the blocking of the shoulder to create that rebound. So when they hit their, their essentially kind of mid handstand position in the round off, they really have to use all of their core to engage their trap and their back muscles and to use the lift from the shoulder to pop off and generate that um, rebound that they need to go on and successfully tumble. Lots of great drills you can do are off boxes. So you can get yourself some boxes. You can do round offs off the box to help um, initiate that chest up position that a lot of the dancers are missing. You can have them do round offs over the blocks, which will help them with that stretch out. They really need to be stretching out long and be fully engaged diagonally to make that go long. So having them go over a block will help them reach. It'll also help with the kick, getting the kick nice and high, and it'll also help with their chest up at the end. So I really love seeing round offs being done over blocks as a great drill um, and doing lots of snap down type activities and make a game. How long can they make their round off um, when they're reaching out and always thinking about where we want them to be with respect to their chest and the hollow position they'll show us at the end. The more roundups you do, the better they get. So have fun with that and really encourage your dancers to keep working on them over and over, even if they think they have it. The truth is they're very hard. They're very hard to execute and you have to put in the time. Good luck. Amazing drills and tips for perfecting those round offs. I love that Sarah emphasizes the more round offs you do, the better they get. Thank you again, Sarah Calvert. Your acro expertise is greatly appreciated. Thanks for listening, everyone, and have a great day.